Hey folks, it's Ard Wolf. Welcome. We have an unboxing today of something that has just arrived and is super timely. Sacred Oil. This is the third and last volume in the 1985 series from Thin Red Line Games, an Italian publisher. Um, this series started with 1985 Under an Iron Sky and then continued with 1985 Deadly Northern Lights. And it is a sort of new updated take on the venerable SPI Next War system. Not the Victory Games Next War, but the SPI Next War, the big monster game that was designed by Jim Dunnigan and developed by Mark Herman. So this is in a big, big, big box. Um, this is roughly the size of an old GDW box, um, but it's, of course, a little over three inches thick. I'm sure the box size is metric because these uh, they're a European publisher. They're located in Italy. And it's about 15 inches, a little over 12 inches, and a little over three inches deep. And these are all fairly large games. They're all fairly expensive. I believe this is now sold out. They may have another small release, and it is anticipated that there will probably be a reprint of this at some point. Uh, but in the meantime, <laughs> expect prices on this on the secondary market if you don't already have one reserved to be through the roof. Now, if you have one reserved with them and you haven't paid for it yet, get in touch with them right away and get that done because they are holding some copies last I heard. And this unboxing, unlike many of my unboxings, is not going to sit around. So I'm filming it on January 13th. The video will come out on January 14th. So without further ado, let us open her up and see what we have. So we have, you know, once again, super big box and blank box back, as was the case with the other volumes in the series as well. These are super handsome. Uh, the counters are really nice. The print quality is really nice. Um, I, I like where they have gone with these graphically, which simultaneously seem like modern graphics while also being a callback to SPI graphics, especially the counters. So let's try not to fart this up. So this is the Middle East, right? This is the situation that kicks off the entire 1985 scenario. And so this game has the rules to combine the other two volumes in the series into one truly enormous footprint game. So we have a wad of baggies, which will go with the other wads of baggies. We have a big deck of cards. And so the cards are kind of interesting. Um, I think those familiar with the old Persian Gulf game from Game Designers Workshop will find that this looks similar at a glance where you play the event cards and you gradually build up into a conflict. Um, this is sort of like that, but you're actually kind of building your order of arrival with these cards as well. And there's quite a few more cards here than there were in GDW's Persian Gulf. All right, so we have a 20-sided die here, which is a pretty nice 20-sided die. I'll put that in with the RPG dice, I think. Um, and then we have a huge stash of event cards, and there are two different decks, one for NATO, one for the Warsaw Pact. Um, should we use the term Warsaw Pact in this particular one, since the rest of the Warsaw Pact is not involved? Maybe we shouldn't, but that is a semantic point that I am not inclined to explore at this time. All right, so uh, we have another D20 that I just found, which, which also, these are relatively nice D20s. Again, I will put them with the RPG dice. Um, I will play Dungeons and Dragons with them, if I were to play Dungeons and Dragons, hypothetically. All right, so here are the, let me try and arrange this in a more sensible way here. So we have the Charts and Tables booklet. So instead of player aid cards, because there's a lot of charts and tables here, you get these, these booklets, which has a unit legend here, and then we have a, a large number of pages of different charts, uh, including charts for nukes, charts for ground support, uh, ground combat, more ground combat, ground movement, and here is your terrain effects chart, including the graphical terrain effects chart so that you know what stuff actually looks like. Okay, so next... We have three booklets, all right? Now, these are going to be for, by, you know, folks used to stuff getting printed to U.S. standards. These are going to seem a little extra tall because um, they're printed to European. I don't know if this is A4, A5, whatever it is. Um, um, so this is the Operational Procedures booklet, okay? And it looks like this is a... Got, talks its way through the sequence of play. Amphibious operations are a thing that will happen in this game. 
naval stuff will also happen in this game. And here's developer notes by Lionel Martinez. And that's about it in here. Then we have a, so here's the rule book, which I guess we'll talk about next. Um, so this is a, I'd say, satin finished paper. This is 44 pages um, of relatively densely written rules, and it's black and white. Um, those who object to a black and white rule book in a $200 game, I, I feel your pain here, but I don't personally care too much. Um, unless that's important, and I'm not sure that it is here. Um, so this is a pretty detailed game system, but not, you know, a record-breakingly detailed game system. Uh, but you'll see that the, the rules are pretty dense, and there's not a ton of illustrations in this book. Uh, but I feel like the rules are broken down into a uh, very nice case system, and the rules should be relatively easy to find uh, during play as you need them, I think. So, and no, I haven't played this system. One of our local guys has, um, so we, we have a chance of getting it to the table at some point. And then we have a scenario book, all right? So here we have some additional rules for international relations, um, surrender of various states, Iranian special units. So this is like game-specific rules. Um, and then we get into scenarios. So scenario one starts on page 10. So there's something like eight or nine pages of game-specific rules. So here's page 10, and it became blood. And this is on the LOC map, which we'll get to. You'll see what the LOC map looks like. That's the sort of global map that covers the entire planet. This is super interesting, actually. I'm very curious to see how this particular scenario plays out. Uh, scenario 2 is Behold a Great Red Dragon, which is on map I and the LOC map. And this is, as you can see, quite a lot bigger. Each of these lines on the setup table represents a specific unit. Um, so this one has a decent number of units. It looks like about 30 or so, 35, 40 maybe, U.S. counters on the map. And mm -hmm, maybe about 25 or 30 Soviet faction counters on the map, where the next one has quite a lot more. Um, scenario three, and the sea gave up the dead. This uses part of map P and the LOC map, and it's also quite big. So the nice thing here is that, um, there are, you know, scenarios that you can get started on. I, I always fuss about that if that's not there. Um, I always want to see at least a couple of small scenarios so that you can get your feet under you with the rules rather than just diving into the campaign, even if it is your total ultimate goal to go to the campaign. So scenario four, the Whore of Babylon. This is map J and part of map K, part of map L, part of map M. So quite a lot of stuff. And I think this is um, around Iraq war uh, resumption, I think. Yeah, location Iran-Iraq border. Okay. And this is pretty big, too. And with with U.S. and Soviet intervention, so I gather. Gog and Magog. So this is a campaign one. Scenario uses the entire map. U.S. sets up first, and there's a lot of stuff here. Okay. Okay, and there's designer's notes here. Developer's notes here. Always a recommendation to read through designer and developer's notes. And here's a bibliography. Be very curious to see uh, what their sources are on this without going into it here. Okay, so that's the three books. So that's a, quite a decent amount of pages right there. All right, next is a whole bunch of player aids and displays. So, Soviet... Okay, so air superiority areas. Soviet faction naval display. Iraqi bases, Soviet faction bases, another air superiority tables display, presumably one for each side, a U.S. faction naval display, Iranian bases, and here are U.S. faction bases, which you can see that uh, looks like some of these are carriers as well, so these are going to be air bases. So you've got a, in addition to the substantial map footprint, you're also going to have uh, a lot of uh, displays off map as well. All right, next are the counters. Now we have here seven sheets of counters that look like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 
14, so 280 counter counter sheets is what it looks like to me. Yep. Uh, there, but there's some blanks on this one. Uh, and these are on a, I'd say, moderately thick white core stock. And I'd say moderately thick for today. Not, you know, it, if, if this was published 10 years ago, these would be thick counters. Um, so we got two sheets of what look like markers. Here we have Soviet units and who I take to be Iraqis. Does that sound right? Or Iranians? It could be Iranians. I think they're Iranians. Okay. More Soviets. Quite a lot more Soviets, as you can see. Here we have U.S. and U.S.-led coalition stuff, which includes um, a bunch of countries that I can't identify by their flags. Uh, but here's what looks like Saudi Arabia. I think these might be the Iraqis, maybe. Not 100% sure on that. But here we have U.S. forces, French, British. Um, looks like some Greeks and some Italians. And some Turks, actually. Which means the only ones I can't really identify are these, which are probably various Middle Eastern countries would be my guess. This, 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 these almost have to be the Iraqis. Because I, I, I know they're in the game and they're the only other large faction that I can't identify. Um, so you can see that there's rough parity between the number of Iranian and Iraqi counters. Um, okay, so seven counter sheets. Now these have sort of an interesting, I think these have like a coating on them, which makes them a little bit of a pain to clip out because they tend to dog ear fairly badly, but once clipped, they're actually okay. So, so there's that. Now let's put the cards aside for a second because I'm going to show you the LOC map and I would like to be able to lay it out to whatever extent I can actually lay it out. And I might actually be able to get the whole thing, eh, not quite, on this table space. All right, so whole planet is basically, no, nah, that's not really true, but uh, the, the central slice of the Americas, of North America, is not on the map, but the, uh, the rest, and, our, and Antarctica, the rest of the planet is. So you have these lines of communication that extend from North America over to Europe, around Africa, or through the Med and the Suez Canal, over to the Middle East, and then over here to the Pacific. Now, interestingly... What we don't have is what look like to be a Soviet link up to the Pacific map, which is an interesting decision um, on the designer's parts. So there's a terrain key. The land boxes are in green. Sea boxes are in red or are in blue, I should say, because the Red Sea would, would actually only make sense right here. Um, okay, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, and, and like I said, there's an entire scenario that takes place on this map, which is also pretty interesting. And the folding pattern on here is a, is interesting too, actually. Okay, now the rest of the maps. These are going to be, if they match the maps in previous games from Thin Red Line in this series, they're going to be quite oversized. Um, so we have what feels like one, two, three, four full-sized maps, and two somewhat smaller maps. So let's try and get a give you a, a sense of what these look like. Of course, I you know, I don't have enough space to set this up as a as its own whole thing to give you a really great view of the maps. Uh, but I do like to I do want to at least give you a sense of what they look like. So I am absolutely guessing here uh, that this is um part of Iran, which does look like it's the case, unless it's Iraq. I recognize none of the city names. Oh, so Iraq is over here. So I'm right, actually. This is Iran. So this gives you a sense of what, they, what the map graphics look like. And I do feel like the map graphics have evolved a little bit over the course of the series. I'm not sure who did the map art for these, um, but I do like the maps. Um, they're also on a nice, thick... Um, somewhat glossy stock. I don't know if they will chip or not, but they're looking at the folds. It doesn't look like they will. And then there's the two smaller maps. This one is so small that I actually can show you the entire thing. Not sure I get it in frame. Uh, but this one is interesting because this is like the end of the Persian Gulf and we have Kuwait up here and of course um, Iraq and Iran right here. Um, so Kuwait City, of course, we'll all remember that, those of us who grew up in the 90s or who were, you know, in college in the 90s when protests happened over that whole affair. 
Um, and here is more Iran-Iraq border area right here, uh, which does include Baghdad, more of Iran-Iraq in here. Um, those who serve down here will no doubt recognize a lot more of the names than I do. I don't recognize that many of the names. Uh, but you could see that the oil fields are marked on this map as well. So presumably, actually, yeah, Kuwaiti oil fields down here. And, oh, I'm just guessing that those might form some kind of victory um, points or victory conditions. Okay, so what we have here then has been a quick look inside the box at the brand new, highly anticipated by quite a lot of people, Sacred Oil from Thin Red Line Games, and soon to be a pricey collectible. Actually, it's probably already a pricey collectible, but to be honest, I don't see these getting sold very often either. So maybe we'll talk about that a little more on the live stream on Monday, so tune in for that. In the meantime, I hope that you have found this video helpful or informative. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. Please do consider supporting the channel. The links to the Patreon, the merch store, and the Ko-Fi are in the video description. Until next time, thanks for watching, and happy wargaming!